If you have been following my recent videos, you know that I use Authy as my two-factor authentication app. However, I know many iPhone owners prefer the Microsoft Authenticate app because it backs up directly to iCloud. This is useful because it means you won't be caught out when it comes time to upgrade or replace your iPhone. You can simply restore those linked 2FA accounts from iCloud to the new phone and away you go. In a sense, it weirdly makes the Microsoft app perhaps the more practical 2FA solution for Apple users. <laughs> So how do you start using Microsoft Authenticator and how do you back it up to iCloud? Well, it's very straightforward. Download the app as per normal from the App Store. Upon opening it, you'll need to agree to the privacy statement, which basically states that Microsoft will be collecting diagnostic data, but nothing sensitive. But you can turn this off later in settings. Having agreed to the privacy statement, we're then presented with the option to sign in to Microsoft or restore our 2FA linked accounts from backup. You would use this second option if you are replacing your phone and reinstalling the app, which I'll demonstrate later in the video. However, for now, I'll skip this page and assume we are setting up the app for the first time. Having clicked skip, we're now presented with the main screen where we can add our first account. For this demonstration, I'll enable two-factor authentication on Wilson's Facebook account. Many online services now offer 2FA and some even employ it as default. On Facebook, you can find the option to enable 2FA under security and login. We'll click on edit followed by use authentication app. We're then presented with a QR code, which is the standard method of linking your account to a 2FA app. We'll click on add account and because this is the first account we're adding to the app, the app wants us to confirm we're not an existing user needing to restore from backup. So I'll click continue and then we're prompted to choose the type of account we wish to add. Click other and allow the app to use your camera so we can scan the QR code. Having scanned the code on Wilson's Facebook page, the last step in the process is to enter the six digit number. And there we have it, we've now set up two-factor authentication on Facebook. From here on in, when Wilson tries to log into Facebook, he'll be asked for his username, password, and the six-digit code displayed in the app. If we take a look at settings, we have several options, and because we skipped logging into Microsoft during the setup process, the first option is to back up our accounts. This is something you should enable because essentially if you lose access to these codes without a backup, you'll lose access to all your accounts. By clicking on the option, the app will attempt to access iDrive in your iCloud. Here I receive an error because my iDrive is not actually enabled, so I'll go into Apple settings to turn it on. With iDrive now turned on, I need to provide a Microsoft account. Using a Microsoft account is a requirement, so if you don't have one, you will need to create one. I'll add Wilson's details, and you can see we receive confirmation that our linked accounts are now being backed up. If you ever need to recover your accounts, you just need to provide these same Microsoft details. Also within settings, you can choose to opt out of Microsoft collecting that diagnostic data we saw during setup. And you can enable AppLock. AppLock is an additional feature that requires a pin code or face unlock to open the app each time you use it. The next section is only applicable if you want to use Microsoft to store all your account details and then use the app to autofill auto those credentials instead of using Apple's keychain or an alternative app such as a password manager. If this is something you want to implement back on the main screen, click on passwords and click on sync with your email address. We then need to go into our Apple settings, choose passwords, and then change autofill to use the Authenticator app. Each of the linked accounts has its own settings icon, which is where we can change the display name for the account and delete the link altogether. However, be sure to disable two-factor authentication on the linked account before deleting anything in the app. 
Finally, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to recover your account should you delete the app or, as is more likely, if you get a new phone. To do this, I'll delete and reinstall my Authenticator app, and then upon downloading and reopening the app, rather than skipping this section, I'll now choose Restore from Backup. I'm then asked for account credentials, and the app offers me the account that I previously used to back up to the iCloud. I'll click on this and enter my password, and that's it. My links are now restored. And that is how to use the Microsoft Authenticator app. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tutorials like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.